it's a privilege to, um, to share the word of God to every one of you. It's, it's a blessing, right? Although it gives me, you know, you get a little bit nervous, but it's still a blessing. Praise the Lord. Um, let's open our Bible into uh, Genesis chapter 1. Yeah, John started on Genesis 1 on last Friday and I said, oops, maybe we have the same, <laughs> we have the same text. It's good that he was moving. Oh, he moved to Exodus. Wow, that's really good. <laughs> I was happy when you moved to Exodus, moved to Leviticus, to Deuteronomy, and went into John, right? <laughs> Those different passages, right? The, the different books in the Bible. So, um, so that's good. We were blessed. Okay, so now let's go into um, the creation, right? I think this is a very um, uh, popular uh, story. It's the creation. Even the kids know about this. So let's, let's start on um, Genesis 1, verse 1. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the, of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from, from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was an evening, and there was a morning one day. Then God said, let there be an expanse between the waters, separating waters from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above the, exp above the expanse. And it, was so, and it was so. God called the expanse Kai. Evening came and then morning the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the gathering of the water he called seas. And God saw it was good. Then God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, seed bearing plants, according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Evening came, and then morning the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will serve as signs for season and for days and years. They will be lights in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule over the day and the lesser light to rule over the night, as well as the stars, as well as the stars. God placed them in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth, to rule the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. Evening came and then morning the fourth day. Then God said, let the water swarm with living creatures and let birds fly above, earth, above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the large sea creatures and every living creature that moves and swarm in the water according to their kind. He also created every winged creatures according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters of the sea, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and then morning the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock creatures that crawl, and the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. So God made the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, 
according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plants on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruits contain seed. This will be food for you, for all the wildlife of the earth, for every bird of the sky, and for every creature, creatures that crawls on the earth. Everything having the breath of life in it, I have given you. Every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was good indeed. Ev evening came, and then morning the sixth day. Let's pray first. Lord, we thank you for your word, oh God. We thank you so much for the richness, oh God, the, 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 so much that we can gather, Lord God, even in the first chapter of Genesis, Lord. I pray that we will be able to tackle this, Father, Lord God, and we can fully understand, oh God, why you have created us, oh God. And thank you, Lord, that you have provided us everything that we can enjoy in life, Lord. You have prepared uh, everything for us, oh God, before the habitation of man, oh Father, Lord. You have prepared everything. Lord, we rejoice, oh God, in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we proceed into the study of Genesis, let me just introduce one word. I think you've seen this word already several times, the word silah. Where can we find it? Psalms. Very good. Where else? There's two books. Huh. Where, where can you find? There's another one. So in the book of Psalms, you can say blah, 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 day, and then silah, right? And also in the book of Habakkuk. Okay, there's also, there's two, there, there's three verse there in Habakkuk, where in the word Selah. And then there are 71 in Psalms, where in, in the word Selah, right? So let's, let's see what this Selah means, right? Why was there, usually when we read books of Psalms, we ignore it, right? But let's see what's the meaning of that, right? Selah is a Hebrew word, is, or a Hebrew name that means to praise, and the other meaning is to pause, right? The other meaning there is to, or to stop, to pause, or to reflect on, right? So this time, so in our passages, we're going to get, you know, uh, um, we're going to go through Genesis and let's look on something that we can reflect on, right? So this, this Salah means to reflect, to meditate, right? To ponder to soak in or to sink in, right? So how are we reading our Bible? Sometimes we read our Bible, we just scan it, okay? Three chapters a day, right? So we, we, we follow those, uh, what do you call that? There's a Bible, the guidelines, the, the, some, how, how, do, how do you call that, that you have to follow? So I have to have three, three, three chapters a day. So you scan it, you, you read it, you don't pause anymore. Right? You don't stop. You just keep reading and reading and sometimes without understanding it. So now when, it, when he says there's silah, that means that you reflect on what you read. You stop and you pause and you see and you think about the goodness of God. Right? And you reflect on the goodness of God. So a lot of preachers, even Pastor Jose says, COVID-19 it was, 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 you know, it, it's a time for, for us to, it's like a forced pause for us, right? It's giving us the time to pause. Why was that needed for us to the time for the pause, right? Because we were so busy creatures, right? We filled our schedules with, ah, there's a birthday party on a Saturday, there's an event here, there's a wedding, there's so much event in our calendar, that we go on, we move on. We, there's a meeting here and meeting there. We're very busy creatures. But God said, pause. God said, stop. Okay? And reflect. 
Isn't it that on the seventh day, which we're going to go through this later, on the seventh day, God rested, right? Why did God rest? Was he tired on the seventh day? No, he wasn't tired. He was showing to, the cre to, the cre to his creation that there is a time to rest, the blessing of rest upon us. Right? So a lot of us are been moving forward with our lives. We have all our schedule lined up. We already forgot to pause. We already forgot to stop and to breathe. It also says that also when you read, you breathe in between. Or you stop and pause and go back and meditate on the scripture. Isn't it that God requires us to meditate on the word of God day and night, right? Although we read our scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, but we still meditate on the word of God, right? So it's time for us also to appreciate, right? To be refreshed by. So that's what it means by sila, although there's other meaning of that, of that word. But we're going to concentrate on this reflective pause, okay? We're going to focus on reflective pause, <clears throat> So sila here allows us to live and consider the immense wonders and mysteries of God, right? And that's why when we read our Genesis later, we're going to take uh, a couple of pauses and then reflect on, okay? And But our, our topic for today is not on on Psalms, our reflective pause is not on Psalms, but our reflective pause is on creation, right? It's so good to reflect onto the wonders of God's creation, okay? So let's go into... Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So let's go into our Genesis, right? So Genesis is the creation, so... Why do we have to, why God drawn me into this, this book is just to refresh us. Remember, we have a series of one, one and a half years or 18 months or more than that we've been bombarded with COVID-19, right? There's so much emotions involved. There's so much chaos. There's so much calamity, devastation, right? Especially on the healthcare world, right? We don't only hear that. We see that. We don't only hear fear, we see fear in the eyes of these people. Okay? And I know that many of us are healthcare workers, and we can experience that, how people are fearing, all right? I have this um, group of mine in, um, uh, these are my high school friends or my high school batch mates. So we group together, uh, we have a, a messenger chat, so we are together in that messenger chat. So you can see we exchange messages there, we encourage one another, and we have our Bible study, our weekly Bible study, and sometimes we pray for one another. And with that alone, you guys, so a lot of them are in the Philippines. With that alone, you can see, ah, so-and-so is sick, and so-and-so died. The mother of my classmate died. On the, oh, so there's so much devastation, right? There's so much, um, this COVID-19, and now COVID-19 is almost, over or oh, hopefully but we're back again i think the the new variant is back again our um our cases in 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 north shore is slowly going up again so it's slowly going up and now we have afghanistan so a lot of these are going into our minds right a lot of these are we affected with this somehow we get affected so that's why it's time for us to pause and to reflect let's go back i think it's good to go back on where it all began where it all started right it started in the book of genesis wherein it's god's creation okay so genesis is the, the story of creation it says there that theology of creation right it's theos right from the word Theos in Greek, theos, right? So it is the it is the theology of God, right? It is is this the creation of God? That means it's not the it's not the issues of science, 
right? But it is the theology of God. It is God. So that's why when you want to know what happened to creation, we look not onto science, but we look into uh, creation. We look into the Bible, right? So because theology is, uh, it, and it also, it's, a, it's not a natural occurring, but it's a supernatural, right? God did not create um, heaven and the earth by millions of millions of years ago. You know, it started in a small fossil and it evolves for millions and millions of years. Right? It's not that way. So that's why we ignore science because science, if you go to science, you're already million and million years, you don't have the man yet. Okay? It's still on what? It's still on a monkey. <laughs> it's still on a monkey. So now we have to go. Creation is supernatural descent because it is the word of God. Right? It is good that God says and, and things appear. Right? <clears throat> and it is inspired by God and all of these are, are created just by the word of God. So let's start. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right? So it's when you say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the, and the earth. So it's very self-explanatory that in the beginning, God created, right? So it's very self-explanatory. You don't have even the kids fully understand that God created the heavens and the earth, right? That was very simple then. But now with the Darwin and a lot of the smart, you know, wise guy came in, and they, they, they polluted it. What happened? They took out, they took out, they stole creation and gave it to science. Right? So a lot of this, because they become wise, all of these men created by God become wise and stole it and gave it to science. Right? But God did all this by himself. Right? God, everything was created by God. Although there is the presence of of Jesus, we know that, the presence of the Trinity, Jesus and, and um, the Holy Spirit. But then uh, the angels are also around. It says there that angels also, also witness the, 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 the beauty of, you know, the, how God has created the, the universe, right? They are there. Um, they are present on, on during creation. But it says here that God himself did it. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. Right? So there's just a beauty. That's it's in Isaiah 48, verse 13. God and the Trinity are involved in creation. Although, yeah, we mentioned that. Although the angels in some sources say they witness it. Yeah? Um, so in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It tells us that there is no pre-existing materials, right? God did not get gather woods or something, or water. We need water. Oh, I have to create this. Or oh, maybe the dust, and, although man came from dust, right? So God did not gather any sources or any materials just to form it and boom. And then let there be light, right? So what God did is just the, his word. He just made the command, right? And there was light, right? So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. So the Spirit of God is there, right? What is that hovering? It's going from one place to the other. It's hovering. What is that? It's preparing, right? He also has these pre preparations. He's preparing the earth also. He's helping out. And before then, God says, let there be light. And there was light, right? So... God did not fashion the light with his hands. He only said his word. Okay, so that God has, that's how God um, created the, the light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And co God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was an evening, and there was a morning one day. Then God said, let there be an expanse of the, uh, between the waters and separating water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above 
I don't know why it's repeated there, the expanse. So. And it was so. God called the expanse sky. Evening came and then morning the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and gathering of the water he called seas. And God saw it was good. And then God said, um, let the fruit, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, seed bearing plants according to their kinds, and the tree bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Evening came and then morning the third day. So the vegetation, the plants was created on the third day, right? Then God said, let there be light in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. Then they serve as signs for season and for days and years. They will be light in the expanse of the sky to provide lights on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule over the day and the lesser light to rule over the night as well as the stars. God placed them in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth, to rule the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw it was good. Evening came, and then morning, the fourth day. So God created the fourth day. What is that? The sun, the moon, the stars, right? So that the, on the third day, God created, did you notice the observation there? On the third day, God already created the plants, right? So who nourished those plants, right? Because the, 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 the creation of the sun and the moon and the stars was on the fourth day. So that means that bigger light that God created on the first day was enough to nourish those plants. Because remember, the, the, the sun and the moon was created on the fourth day. So what, it was enough. So in Revelation, so when you see this, way, when you see in Revelation, the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb it is its light. So the sun and the moon will also disappear on, the, on, on Revelation at the end. So in the beginning, that was so the plants was able to be sustained by that bigger light, right? And then even though the, you know, it didn't even get the sun to nourish it. Okay, so God started creation the way he wanted it to end. So he started it on creation. Plants can survive without the sun. Even in the end, the sun will disappear, right? So then God let, let the earth produce living creatures according to their kinds. So this is the sixth day, right? So we have the first day is the light. The second day, we have all this, um, the light, the darkness, so all of that. And then now we have, we go now into the sixth day, which is the animals, the livestock, the creatures, the wildlife. So God created it. Okay. Um, during God's creation, what did he say? Let there be. So it appears, right? Even the animals, did they start into the fossils first? They grow into something else and they grow and get bigger. No, God said, let there be. In one day, God created, right? It did not evolve in, you know, how the science shows evolve. And there's a fossils, there's a meteor, whatever is that, 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 that they call it, that it started. Or even the plants. How does the plant, God created the plants. It did not start on the seed, right? Although they are, they are seed-bearing plants. But they are created just the way the plants is. Okay, and the animals, they are just animals. They did not start as babies. They are not started as, as small animals, right? So that is how God created them, okay? So God created the world. This is a complex world, actually, right? But God has created it with simplicity, with his words, right? He did not get, oh, I need... Hydrogen, oxygen, you know, what else do I have? Carbon, I need all this so I can make sun, right? So simple, but, that's, but it's complex. When you looked at it, how God, okay, this is the, 
the mile of the sun to the creation. This is how, how far it is so that my people can live. So it's just the beauty that when you go and reflect on it, the wonders of God's creation, you know that it is created by, the, um, by, by our omnipotent, omniscient God. No? So that's who God is. And then on the sixth day, God created the humans, right? So he, let's see. Of course, God created the animals on the sixth day. Sixth day. And then let's go to 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. So this is now our first reflective pause, right? It is really good. We tackle on the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day. All of those were created by God before the creation of men. Did you notice that? Ah, I have to do this first. I have to do that. So the, the organization of how God created the world, he put it one after the other. And he said it was good. He agreed to how he organized it. He was happy on the way he put things into order. And now finally he said, I will make man, let's, let us, right? So when God, um, what our observation here is, when God create the light, you know, how God, how God says it, let there be, right? And let there be, right? So that's, God just keeps saying, let there be. Right? So he's making it his command, right? He just makes his words. And then when it comes to man, that's why we can pause here. When it comes to man, he said, let us. Did you notice that? Let us. Now there is the plurality in the creation. At first, God is just saying his words, let there be, let there be. But now God said, let us. Now it involves the Trinity, right? We believe that the angels are watchers, the angels are witness, but this let us are the involvement of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Now there's plurality in the creation, right? Let us make man in our own image. And he created them, male and female. Of course, this is a summary here, male and female, but because when we go to chapter 2, we know that man was created first, and then the woman was created after the man. Okay, so there is, there is what we have here. There was a change of tone or maybe a change of ingredients or something that when man was created, it was special. It was extraordinary, right? So let us, so what is that? Lord, I want the Trinity to be with me. There's hands on. Right? There's contribution. Right? There, I want you to, all of you, all of us, participate in the creation of men. Right? So why does God require the three of them to create men? It means that there's complexity in humanity. Right? We're a complex being. We are really a complex being. Right? Because, you know, as a healthcare worker, we have different organs in our body. And how God created us is very beautiful. You know, how our organs, the heart fails, the kidney compensate. How the kidney fails, the heart compensate. They are compensating to one another. They're helping each other because God, that's how God designed it, right? So there is the, there's electrolytes inside the cell and outside the cell, and they cross each other just to maintain hemostasis, just to maintain the balance. Right? So that's the beauty, you know, when you, when you become, a, well, being a nurse, or maybe Anna make and say, she has to tackle three years, four years, to take her master's, to take her master's just to study what? Just to study human beings, just to study the involvement of the heart, how the function, functionality of the heart, that it says here, here, you know, there's electrodes, you know, there's stimulation, you know, so things like that. Right? So there's complexity 
in humanity and it involves that's the beauty there that because it involves everyone right so the beauty behind that is that we are created special right it's not let there be let there be right but god created us special god created us very you know we are like very delicate right yeah, very intricate. He knit us together in our mother's womb. He formed our nose, right? He gives us all this, this balance in, the, in our complexion. He provides us our, the, the complexion of our skin. So a lot of these things are involved on creation. And now, why are we pausing on this one? It's because we want to see a lot of these things are happening in our world today. And I know a lot of, even Christians, sorry, even Christians are questioning, questioning God, you know, questioning about, is, does God exist, especially with COVID-19? You know, they're saying, oh, God, why did you bring this calamity? You know, and we know that God, uh, COVID-19 is not an act of God, right? That is not, God is not the author of evil, Right? We need to know that very surely. God allowed evil to exist, but he, is not, he did not create evil. Evil already existed, and God allowed it. Right? So why did God allow it? Sometimes we question, why did you God allow evil? It is because also for contrast. How can you say one thing is good if there's no evil? So what is that? Better good or good good, you know? So there is ex evil exists. Evil exists also because God gives us free will, right? God honors and, 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 and God honors that free will that he gives us. That's why he has to allow evil in order for, for us to have to enjoy free will, okay? So now, where are we now? So humans are so intricate. We are a complex creatures, okay? God created us in a very special way. So sometimes we question, uh, we question like in Psalms 8, 4, who am I that God should be mindful of me, okay? Sometimes we are so overwhelmed with the blessings. Sometimes we are so overwhelmed with, Lord, who am I that you are so mindful of me? But what is God's answer to us? I created you. In my image, I created you, right? I created you with my, the, 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 the whole Trinitarian, right? With Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We created you. That's why you are special. So sometimes, sometimes we question God, why are you so mindful of me? God is so mindful of us because he loved us, because he created us. That's why sometimes... Um, Sometimes I said, Lord, I am not a special. A lot of us are, are sometimes undermining ourselves, right? I am not the only one undermining myself. A lot of us, we undermine ourselves, right? Lord, I am not as smart as so-and-so. I am not as good as so-and-so, right? But I said, Lord, I am not the smartest. I have to take notes in order for me to retain information. I have to take notes, a lot of notes, so that I remember because that's, that's the way I remember is by taking notes. For some reason, it helps me retain by, when I take notes, right? So, so God is saying, because I created you, that's why I am so mindful. But sometimes when we are going through struggles, here we go with our struggles, especially with the devastations that we are seeing, the devastations that we are hearing, and even it goes into our family, right? Sometimes it, it is into our family members. So what do we say? Oh, my God. Kawawa naman, di ba? Parang we have our pity party. Kawawa naman. I like, ako ay kawawa naman, Tita Cheryl. Wala na, mag-isa na. Wala na, you know. <laughs> mag-isa na, wala na yung aking anak, you know. So, but the thing is, we are fulfilling, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes when we don't have money, kawawa naman, wala, wala pera, you know or something we have our own pity party right sometimes we have we, we 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 face our struggles and then we have our own pity party right 
Sometimes our struggles blind us and make us lose our focus. A lot of times, our difficulties make us erase, you know. That's why I'd like us to go back into creation and how God made us so that in spite of our struggles, we know who you are, who you are and how you are created, right? There is an illustration that um, there is a man... Um, he had, a, he had a vision. One, one night, he had a vision, right? So he was standing here, and then he saw God was standing in the, in, in, in the mountain and said, go and get your inheritance. So the man, of course, will go and get his inheritance. So while he was walking, because a lot of things out there, a lot of things, he has to claim all his inheritance, so he has to keep moving. So while he was walking and walking, he was wondering he's not able to get anything, nothing, right? And so then, after that, the vision disappeared. So he was wondering what was that vision. The second night, another vision, the same vision, and God was in the corner and said, this is your inheritance. So the man is wondering why he's not able to take his inheritance. He wants to grab all that belongs to him, because that is mine. That is my inheritance, right? So he wants to grab, he wants to get, but he's not able to get it. And only to find, and then he, he finally found when he, he stepped closer, he saw there's a, there's a man with a tattoo, it says struggle. There's someone that's pushing him back, and it's, it says big struggle. So the meaning that he's not going to be able to reach into his inheritance because there is a blockage, and it says big struggle, right? So then he lost the vision again until the third night. He was walking again and he was walking. Again, it's the same scenario. And this time he was wondering, God, God, help me. I don't know why I cannot get my inheritance, right? And then God said, look back. And then when he looked back, there are 10 people saying, this is your purpose. And it's pushing him that you have a greater purpose. So that man is being pushed by 10 people around him. And the only way he was able to get the inheritance is that because he knows that there, there are 10 people around him. And he said, God, why is this happening? It is because you have to understand fully that your purpose is greater than your struggle. There's only one man, one hand that is pushing him back, but there are 10 people that is pushing him forward, right? So it's the same thing with us. We have God that is keep pushing us forward to overcome that struggles, right? We have our struggles in our life, and then, but it says there that your purpose is greater than your struggles, right? We all have our own different struggles in our life. But one thing that we know that the purposes of God is greater. What is that for him to have the Trinity to form us, to, to build us, you know, to create us? And who are we to back off with our purpose? Are we backing off with our purposes? As some of us might back off. But God said, no, you don't have that right to back off for your purpose because I created you. I created you for this reason. So God keep pushing, God keep pushing us. Yes, there are struggles in our way, right? It's like Alyssa, she has struggles, but she knows exactly and she hears from God that this is what God wants her to do. And, you know, one day she said she was running in one of, the, one of the forest preserve and just, you know, she was struggling during that time because um, uh, struggling and in going into the law school, you know, application and all that kind of thing. And she said, Lord, so what if I go to law school? What is that really you want me to do? And God gives us the exact um, 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 a word and said, go for, I think, you, human rights and something, liberty, whatever. God gives us exactly, right? The word of God, it's implanted in her heart, right? There will be struggles, right? It is hard. Right now, they have not started school, but she's already have a lot of books to read. <laughs> I can, every time I talk to her, mom, I spend seven hours just to read, and yet I still have a lot to read. 
Those are struggles, right? So those are difficulties. Like we have a lot of students here. So yes, there is struggles in school. I went to, went to school. I did my, 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 my master's in theology. I went to school. I have my struggles. And yet I keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward until I got it. Right? So kids or especially students, you might have your struggles, but you need to keep pushing forward because you have 10 people that is pushing you forward, right? That's why we don't have reason to quit, right? If you are quitting, if you are drawing back, then shame on us. Then you forget on how God has created us. Remember, God created us and very special. Let there be, but us, let us make God in our own image. You know, so our purpose is greater than our struggle. So, um, oftentimes our struggle blinded us to our real purpose on earth, right? So we all of us has our own purpose in life. So make sure you don't give up because that is not your making, right? That is not how God made you to be. You are not made to be quitters, right? You are not made to draw back, right? To get back. In spite of, like for example, during pandemic, wow, um, we struggles, the healthcare workers, we struggles with our, um, with our uh, uh, staffing. We have a lot of staffing issues. And when they said, oh, Cheryl, you go into our COVID place, I don't like to go. But then, you know, you don't have a choice, of course. So you go. So those are our struggles, right? So human life is very valuable to God, right? Because he created us. We are created in the image of God, right? So that's why, you know, there is, I know there's a big difference between the deity, between God and man and humanity, but there's compatibility, right? That's why God and uh, Jesus the incarnation, God was reincarnated, you know, become man. That means there is already compatibility. When God went to the earth, when Jesus went to earth, he did not become a bird, right? He did not become a tree. <laughs> he became man because men, only men are created in the image of God. And this is special because God has given us the ability to procreate, right? That is creation. It's the work of God. He passed on some of that creative ability to us. So that's why man has the ability to procreate. That's why Satan, the angels doesn't have the ability to procreate. They cannot procreate. The birds and the fish, and uh, they're better than the angels because they were able to procreate on, on their own, right? The dogs, you know, they are both able to procreate on their own. But then, that's why Satan hated men. So what did he do? He put in homosexuality. Homosexuality destroyed procreation, right? Because Satan was so jealous, jealous of men. Men was given so much for us, right? He prepared the, the, the earth first before men get creation, right? So that, that, so that men can live, you know, with the birds, enjoy the birds, and the sky, the animals, and then enjoy everything else. Okay, so then here, how many days did God create man? One day, right? God created man in one day. So then we did not evolve from monkey. Because <laughs> the monkey involvement takes us forever to be man. But I think uh, uh, Adam is so blessed, right? He did not... Uh, he did not go through childhood. He did not go through teenage life, adolescent life. He became a man. <laughs> it's good for him. He just became man. That's how God created him. He became man, right? And he doesn't have any parents too, right? Or, or in-laws. <laughs> so that's how God, for us, to, God has designed us in order for us to live to the fullest, Right? So the beauty of that in our creation. So that's why struggle can come. But remember that our purpose, that our creation is way better than our struggles, is way better than our difficulties, and better than everything else. 
Right? So God blessed them, and the verse 28, God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply the earth, and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God, sa God also said, Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains seed. This will be food for you. So during the time of Adam and Eve, until the time of Noah, they are vegetarian, right? Because that's, that's God, God only allowed them to eat uh, vegetables, fruit, every plants, right? Until when you look on Genesis 9-3, that was the time that they were permitted to eat flesh of the animals. So during that time, they are just eating plants or seed-bearing plants. Okay, so the fi finality here, God's final analysis of his creation was very good, right? He said that it was very good indeed because that's already added. Man was already added into the creation, right? The observation that it was good, it was good, it was good. But then when man was created, it was very good. Now it's perfect, right? It was perfect because man is created and man has to rule. He was said here, everything having the breath of life in it, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he has, had made and it was very good indeed. Even evening came and then morning the sixth day. So then... Um, so then let's go to Genesis 2. We still have some time, sir. Okay, let's go to Genesis 2. So the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed on the seventh day. God had completed his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, for on it he rested from all his works of creation. So God rested, it's not because he is tired. He wanted to show example to the human beings that, hey, or to his creation, hey, you need to have some time of rest, right? Sometimes here, I know Sunday is where we come in here, but sometimes we get so busy with ministry, so busy ministering to one another. Sometimes, you know, do you have time to reflect on the goodness of God, right? So we used to before, um, sometimes when it gets so, schedule is so busy, I sometimes uh, uh, make sure that my Saturday is like my day of rest, right? I created my Saturday as my day of rest. What is that day of rest? It's just to, to not to be lazy, but just to relax, you know? You're not rushing from one schedule to the other. Sometimes we need that. We don't rush from one schedule to the other. We need to have a day of rest. And for us to recuperate, right? Because we work from Monday to Friday for our body to recuperate, for our body to relax, and then for our mind to be refreshed, right? We don't have to be doing, maybe you're just reading a book or me reading your Bible or meditating or enjoy because God created rest is for us also to enjoy his creation, for us to enjoy the beauty, the goodness, you know, the things that he, he made for us. So that's why God created rest, okay? It is a blessing of rest, right? Um, so verse 4, there are the re he, these are the records of the heaven and the earth concerning their creation. So Moses uh, wrote the book of Genesis, right? So these are the records. So these are all preserved. Because during time of creation, we don't have, who are the witnesses? The angels are the witnesses, right? But these were preserved. God preserved these words and gave it to Moses. Okay, so these are preserved so that Moses can write on it. So this is, the, this is the history. So this is the genealogy. This is how God created the heavens and the earth. So then, um, so at the time the Lord made the heavens and the earth. So no shrubs of the fields had yet grown on the land and no plants of the field and yet had yet sprouted, for the Lord had not made it rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. But mist would come from the earth and water all the ground. Then the Lord had formed the man. So this is the details and other details. It takes two chapters 
for the creation of man. So we had here the details. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. And the man became a living being. So it says here, right? God formed man out of the dust. Why are a lot of things there? Why dust? Right? Sometimes God used dust. So that it brings us into our humbleness, into our humility, because dust is barely nothing. It's useless, you know. But God uses that to create men, so that to remind us that we came from dust. It, it just get us into, um, into humility, you know. So it's the, base, the most basic element. The dust are the most basic element. But then what is that God breathed, right? So it says God breathed. Breath here is from the Hebrew word ruach, right? The ruach means it's also the same as spirit. So God breathed his spirit into the man. So now God is not only create us special with the trinity, he also gives us his spirit, right? So that's why God has given us the, 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 the breath of life. And that breath of life, is the Zoe kind of life, which is the eternal life. God meant us to live eternal, right? It is just because of the fall that man has to die. But then Jesus redeemed it again, right? And as because of Jesus, we now again have eternal life, right? So by that time, um, God gives us, that was the very intention of God to man. Right? The very intention of God to man is for you to live in eternity. That's why I give you my spirit and I give you the breath of life. Lord. So then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had formed. The Lord God caused to grow out of the ground every tree pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden as well as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So here again, we can pause on here. Um, God placed, what, what did God place here? In the middle of the garden, there were two things that God placed. What are those? Hmm? The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God did not only place the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden, but God put two things there. So why is that? God wants to test the choices of men, right? God wants to test because there is the tree of life. Why can't you not enjoy the tree of life, right? But instead, what did man did? He to, he, 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 he chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which leads to death, right? So there are two choices there. Again, God gives us or a test of the, exer the, the test of how men exercise their free will, you know? God is testing them. How are they going to exercise their free will? Remember, God gives us the free will so that we are not forced to worship him, so that there's some freedom of us to love him and to enjoy his presence, to fellowship with him, right? So God gave us a choice, and those choice, God gave man a free will. It is sacred to him that he refuses to violate it, right? So there's two choices there, the tree of life. And then the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But what did man choose? The tree of death, right? So that's, that's why God, so here, that's why God has to allow um, evil again. But you explained that earlier. It showed that we don't have a dictator God, right? God wanted us to make a choice. And of course, in the, in the passage, isn't it that the passage also says that do not eat did we say that? Including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So here, the Lord took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to work on it. And I just jump into 15. Let's just jump into 15. The Lord took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any of the three of the garden. There's so much tree in the garden, right? But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? For on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. So God did not only warn, did not only tell, the, tell um, Adam not to eat, but he gave it the consequence. The moment you eat, you will die. Right? So then um, the question is, who did God give the command about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? He gave it to, to Adam, right? Is Eve present on this time? No, okay. So Eve is not present during that time. So the observation is, it says, but God, the command of God is to watch and to keep it, to work on it, right? So this is the garden. That is your job, Adam, is to make sure that you work onto the Garden of Eden, right? Make sure that you till it and you, you water it or whatever you do in the garden, and you keep an eye on it, right? So did Adam, I think Adam was, uh, failed to do his job because he was not able to keep it, to watch it, right? Because there's already, Satan is already roaming around in the place, right? He was already getting an opportune time to tempt, right? He was already looking for an opportune time to tempt. And yet Adam, if he's working, watching over the garden, he should have driven Satan out there and then. In verse 15, he could have driven Satan out. Why, why is Satan lingering around? He was there, right? He was, Satan is lingering around there. And then he said that the tree and that the instructions that do not eat, because you have so many, sometimes sabi nila, uh, uh, whatever, kung ano ang bawal, yun ang masarap, or something like that. <laughs> whatever is, I, I don't know how to translate that. <laughs> What, 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 whatever God commanded not to do, and the more that people does it, right? So, kung nung bawal, yun pa yung ginagawa ng tao, right? So, sometimes, wag mo nalang ipagbawal, you know? Kasi mga matitigas ang ulo, you know? Like, like our kids, we told them not to do this, the more that they're going to do it, right? Then don't tell them. <laughs> you give them specific instruction not to do it, the more that they like to do it, right? Like on fire. Do not play on fire, right? The more that you want to test it, test it, right? Until you will realize that, ah, it's really hot. <laughs> oh, it will really burn me. So the thing is, he said, Adam, he was already commanded by God, right? And then, and yet, and you will surely die. So it, it's not says, there's no excuse for Adam. Oh, I did not know that I will die. How come you did not know how? I give you instruction, right? So then, when you go into the, into the lower verse there, um, then Eve was created, right? So the, 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 the thing here, um, on the lower part, so let's say 18, uh, then the Lord God said, it's not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper corresponding to him. The Lord God formed out of the ground every wild animal and every bird of the sky and brought each to the man to see what he could call it. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was it. So I think this, this, this verses here are the, is about the creation of Eve. This one at last, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one will be called woman, or for she was taken from man. So what is this here? And then, um, and so the woman was created. So during that time, remember, God gave the command to Adam, right? And then so that the devil, the devil has seen an opportune time, right? So that was the devil. What did the devil do? He tempted. Eve. Why did he choose to tempt Eve instead of Adam? Huh? Because Eve did not have a direct command from God, right? So maybe that makes a difference. I don't know if that makes a difference. I, uh, God said not to, you know, I think it's just a secondary 
you know. God, Adam is relaying to Eve. So maybe he did not see, she did not see the intensity of it. I don't know. Because he was not there when God commanded not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of evil, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? So is there a difference there? Maybe there is a difference there. But God commanded Adam. Right? So that's why God, when you go into chapter 3, verse 8, then the man and his wife, we're just going to jump Genesis 3.8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord, because they already eat there. I'm just jumping. Um, so this time they already eat. All right. This is already the fall of man, chapter 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. Right? And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So the Lord God called out to the... Who did God call out to? To the man. Right? God called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? Right? It did not say God called the man and the woman. But he called the man. Right? What was that? It was given responsibility to Adam. Right? He called the man. He called Adam because first of all, I have given you the command not to eat. And you were not able to keep watch of the garden. And you were not able to protect your wife. Because remember, I, I think we have to look at this. This is also another reflective pause, right? The responsibility that was given to men, right? Father of the house, you are the head of household, right? You were given command by God. Take care of your family, right? So what happened? What's going on? Fatherless America, right? We have fatherless America. A lot of men are absent in the house. But then who is God calling? Who is God looking? He called the men, right? So I think it's, it's an eye-opener for all men. You step up with your leadership, right? With God said you rule. You, God said you lead. God said you make dominion. You do, dominion, because that was go and multiply. That was the time when only Adam was created. You know, multiply and surround, you know, rule on the fish of the earth. You know, go rule on, rule on these things, rule on that, rule on these things. Right? That was command was given to Adam. Right? So now let us, you know, I mean, we need to uphold all our men because God is making you responsible. There is weight, there is heaviness on leadership, right? Just look at our, our president. He just, what did he do, right? Millions and thousands, 15,000 of Americans still left in Afghanistan. That is going to be on his shoulder. It's going to be on his head. The blood of those people is on his head, right? So I think we just don't think that, you know, you probably thought that, I, God created me, you know, and then you men, you guys are created with special calling from God. And that is to lead and to lead your family, to keep watch of the garden, keep watch of your family, keep an eye, right? Protect your wife. Adam was not able to protect his wife. He was, she was tempted. And then when God called him, oh, the woman that you gave me. No, you're supposed to protect your wife. Right? So then I think it's a call for all men to, hey, take a stand also. Take a stand and rule in your family. Take a stand and, you know, take all this responsibility that God has given you. A lot of men, what are they doing? They're pulling their family out. It was the fathers pulling their family out. We have witnessed that in the church. They're fooling their family out, right? And then when there's someone, you know, uh, and then after that, when the wife died, what happened? The family crumbled. Family crumbled. Why? You are the man. Take the leadership, you know? So all of these are, our, all of these are reflective, right? These are all our reflective pauses. We made pauses because we need to, to look back and to see 
how are God creating us? How God has created us? We are, we are created to be strong to overcome our struggles, right? We are created in, in very special, different from other creation. We are created in a way that it becomes convenient for the man because he has everything already, right? When he was created, he already has the, 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 the seed-bearing plants for his food. We have, he, has, he has the animals to enjoy, right? So these are how we are going to reflect on how God has created us and also reflect on our, how men are, giving, are given responsibility by God, right? So, so that, you know, like for example, in my family, absence of men, I have to, what is that? Women has to step in so that I can, you know, to step in because of the absence of men, right? It is a challenge for everybody here. It is a challenge also for us, even for women. We are standing up. We also have roles and responsibilities for our kids. We also um, have leadership in our family, right? So like, like, for example, in my case, I have to step in and take that leadership because of the absence of men. And a lot of us here, we can see that a lot of women are stepping in in the absence of men and the absence of a true leader. They, you guys are created as true leader, okay? That were, are, are all your callings, right? So, um, so those are our reflective pauses, right? So first of all, we are created our struggles, our purpose are greater than our struggles. The second one is that we are created from dust, from nothingness, so that we are going to go back into that, gives us the, the humility that we, God, we can humble down, okay? That we are nothing. It is, we are only something because of God, right? So then number three is that, um, uh, I forgot, is that we are, um, that our choices, right? That we are given choices, we have that free will. How are you going to do with your choices? Are you gonna choose something that leads to death? or choose something that leads to life, right? So we are given choices, even for our young people. What are you going to choose? Are you just gonna mess around and ruin your life so early, right? You guys are young, do not mess your life. The moment your life is messed up, it's just hard, you know? Sometimes you need to have a lot of courage to stand up and to regain it, you know? So why ruin it in the first place? Right? So while you young people finish your school, do not, you know, do not party here and party there. Forget about those parties. Yeah, finish your school. And then the last one here, our reflective pause, is for the men to take the ownership, to take the leadership, right? Because God did not look for women. God did not look for Eve. He made the men accountable. Okay, so that heaviness, the family, the, 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 you know, God give you that family of yours to protect, to watch, and to, to, to take care of. Okay, so those are our um, reflected pauses. Let's all stand.